Hi, this is Rob Sen back with the possibly the most difficult uh, proof in Young's geometry. Um, and I want to talk first about a couple of things we shouldn't do. All right, so we want to prove that every point is on at most four lines. And what's tempting is to say, well, if I have four lines on this point in the bottom left, then those four lines cover all nine points in the geometry. Okay, which is true, and so if there's a fifth line, there's nowhere for it to go that doesn't break axiom 4. Well, that's all true, but we haven't proven that yet. So um, let me just bring this up, and this is an important point, that um, I'm allowed to use the axioms, and when I'm proving a theorem, like when I'm proving the theorem uh, 4, I'm allowed to use any theorem that's above it in the list, right? That's how axiomatics work. I have to go in order. And I can use any theorem above it and any axiom. The problem is that um, the fact that there are um, exactly nine points, that's theorem nine, right? <laughs> so, so I can't use theorem nine. Um, it's true, it's true, and I can use the model uh, as I was showing you, I can use the model to try to figure out what's going on here, um, but but I need to proceed without. So also, I'm going to do a proof by contradiction. So let me show that uh, just a little bit, right? So I'm going to do I'm going to do what we said and include all of these four lines, right? Which by theorem three is true, and then I'm going to um, say, well, what if another line exists? Oops. Let's see if I can um, undo that move. All right. Um, and the idea is we're going to add another line on here. And then we're going to use that to contradict something. This is going to be a proof by contradiction. But what the heck are we going to contradict? Well, let's go up here and talk about things that could be contradicted, right? I need to prove that these extra points it would take to put this line in here would contradict something. Well, it's not going to contradict this, adding an extra line. It's not going to contradict axiom 2, because I can put an extra line and just make sure there are only three points on it, exactly three points. Uh, not going to contradict this. Um, not going to contradict this. So I'm kind of left with only one thing that can be contradicted. And notice that we're talking about a number of things. And what's kind of cool about this, it says for each line L and each point P, there exists exactly one. Ah, so now we have an upper bound, right? We have a limit on how many things can be parallel to this line L that go through the point P. Okay. So that's going to be our limiting factor, and that's how I decided uh, what to try to contradict. Right? I only have this, this sort of thing. Um, and then, by the way, this proof also is uh, very similar to an existence um, and uniqueness proof, where first you prove that a solution exists, and then to prove that it's unique, we assume that there's a second solution and prove that it's identical to the first. Um, so uh, just letting you know, this is a very common proof technique that we're going to use a lot. Also, I want to make the point that when you do a uh, proof that's not just a direct proof, right? You say by contradiction. So if you're going to prove something by contrapositive or prove something by contradiction or prove something by induction, we always go ahead and put that in parentheses after the proof just so people know what to expect as they're going through our proof. Starting our proof then, we are just going to take the given, right? The given says that every point, so we're like, okay, let some arbitrary point P exist, there it is. And our first construction step is, hey, Theorem 3 said there were four distinct lines, so let me go ahead and create four distinct lines. Okay. So what's next? Well, we need a point. This is going to be the, the point that we use um, that's going to have two parallel lines through it. So um, I need a name for it. And I'm sorry, you're not quite able to see 
the edge of this proof. So I don't know what that's going to do. I just widened the recording window. I don't know if that's going to screw everything up or not, but I tried it. Um, and so then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to assume that there's a fifth line, right? A fifth line on P. So here's the crucial idea, right? Is that I've got to have a fifth line that joins through here, okay? And it's got two points on it. Uh, I called that line L um, just so you can see uh, better what's going on here, right? Um, and what we're doing is we're creating these two red lines. This is why Q was so important. Q is on one of the four lines. It doesn't matter which of the other eight points in the geometry, in Young's geometry it is. It, I just put it over there to the left where I could see it. But it could go anywhere else. And so we're just constructing the two red lines, right? If there is this fifth line, then by theorem, by axiom four, we know this, these two red lines exist. Now we're going to prove that, um, that P can't be on either of the red lines. And I hope that's clear, right? Let's just say that this point, right? That uh, P was right here, right? Well, you know, if this line, you know, if the way this line works is it goes through P and over to Q, what's going on? Well, now I'll have this line, right, that goes through P and X, and I'll have this line that goes through P and X. That breaks axiom four, which says we can have, uh, there's a unique line that goes between um, any two points. And for the same reason, P cannot also be um, on the line YQ. So it can't be in either place. That's important. So we know that the red lines, um, that P is not on it. Okay, so now it's important to notice that, that the third points on these two lines, these two red lines that we created, um, they, they can't be P, right? We already said P can't be on there, but they can't be um, on all three of these lines, right? It's if I, it's possible, right? It does, it doesn't actually work, but theoretically it'd be possible for this line M to be on P and to be one of the original four. And when I created this line, oh, I picked up, you know, this point. And it would be possible maybe for, you know, this line it to connect over here somewhere, right? So it's possible for the third points on these red lines to be on at most two, of the uh, three lines that that's not right that that isn't PQ, um, which leaves one. This is the key, right? There has to be some line. All right. Now, in the actual proof, I called it M. Okay, so that's what this is saying. We're saying that hey, um, whatever line it is, whichever of the original four lines that's not line PQ and doesn't have a point in common with YQ or XQ, call that line M and notice that it's parallel to two things, right? And that's our contradiction. By the way, uh, old school where I grew up, uh, we would use this for contradiction. You'd use the hashtag. So you'd just see a proof with parentheses hashtag and then when you got to the contradiction, uh, they would also use the hashtag here, right? This is the contradiction, right? This parallel, this, this uh, line M being parallel to both of the red lines is our contradiction, right? Why? So if we look at axiom five, axiom five is the Euclidean parallel condition, right? And it says that on the line M, uh, given a line M and a point not on it, so this is Q, so Q is our point not on M, there is exactly one line that's parallel to M uh, that goes through Q. Well, we have to, therefore, that's our contradiction um, of axiom 5. And that completes our proof. I forgot to put a little square in here, uh, but we are done.